So, so good morning, everybody, uh, on our last, last day. Uh, you heard a lot this week about open science, open access, but my lecture will be focused on publications, open access of publications, and I will, will try to present you more detailed uh, uh, what about you have to think of when you choose the right journal in, the, in your research process. Some introduction slides you already heard, so I won't not uh, be very long at these slides. What is open science? Some definitions you heard this week. More important is uh, that uh, who is involved in this process of practicing open science, you as researchers, then also institutions as policy makers, policy makers in the national level, publishers, also libraries. We are trying to, uh, to put you as many support services as we can and we know about it and also funders with also their policies and demands uh, on the topic of open science. Many topics we heard this week, open access, open source software, research infrastructure, open data, nothing about open education, uh, also citizen science. We try to give you some skills about this topic and also uh, something about research integrity also heard from Yanya uh, in the Wednesday morning. And these are the topics that open science is dealing with. It's an umbrella uh, under this umbrella of open science are all those these topic, topics important. Uh, and what I have uh, wish to tell you that we are uh, talking about research outputs. I will talk about only about publications. You heard a lot about research data, also software. Workflows can be also a research result and many others. Uh, your uh, outputs in the research process we are talking about today as research outputs. And we are not thinking only about publications anymore. Benefits of sharing research outputs for researchers. There are many benefits if you will in the future decide to practice uh, open science. Increased transparency and trust of their work, easier availability to, for other scientists, also citizens, reproducibility and reuse, then readability, citation and impact, Long-term archiving and preservation, also a very important topic, that your research results will remain for a long time also to be available to, to you and to others. You can take new ways of gain, gaining recognition, reputation, and also uh, some employment opportunities can arise and increase visibility and impact of your research work. In the context of societal benefits, not only research, there are also many uh, important uh, benefits as taxpayers get value for money. This is the, the fundamental <laughs> basis of open science that everything what is paid with uh, public funding must be or it's uh, right to be uh, public available. Uh, also, the solving of global research problems we are facing today in the modern world with a lot of global so societal problems and with cooperation and transparency of your work, your future work, perhaps we will uh, get a solution faster. This is much uh, very important. And are any other these benefits you heard uh, this week? Okay, and then uh, I will talk only about publications, articles, not data. Although the data are related to publications because on the data you can and you derive then the articles and publish them in a chosen uh, journal. Ideally, it is free for everyone, open access. And if you choose the most open license, Everyone can uh, download, read, copy, distribute, search, and so on your, your work. 
and this is ideally situation. It not happens uh, uh, in every case, but this is our uh, effort to uh, to open uh, our content, our research achievements as uh, open as possible, as wide as possible. The differing, uh, difference between open access and subscription-based uh, journals or publishing activities it is that reading is for free and subscription-based journals we have to pay. Subscription-based journals we are paying as libraries, as other associations, if you wish that also you as researchers can read the scientific efforts or achievements, we have to pay the subscription. If it's article or the content uh, published as open access, the content is free for everybody. But also open access is not uh, without costs at, and in this transition period. I hope that this transition period will, need, will not take another 20 years or that the period will be shorter. But also open access can cost. And that's why we have to pay as authors the APC, Article Processing Charge, that publish and then open your content. And uh, in subscription-based journals, uh, the, the publishing as you for authors uh, cost uh, nothing or less, much less, if they charge some processing charges. The situations are, are very different. Only for reminding about uh, op uh, Creative Commons licenses, the, the main difference between traditional scientific publishing and open access publishing is in the who owns the copyright. In the traditional scientific publishing, the publisher is a copyright holder. In the ideal situation in open access, you hold the copyright. Why, why is that this important? Because in the traditional scientific publishing, when you wish when you transfer all your uh, copyright rights to the publisher, you have to ask them for their own con or, or your own content if you wish to reuse it in another works. In open access situation, you stay the copyright holder and you are free to use your own content, your own results, achievements, as you wish in another derived or new new works you wish to done. And we have many uh, two paths, and we, between those paths are some variations, how to achieve the open access uh, by articles. And one is this golden, uh, gold open access, and another is green open access. Now are the funder policies focused on open, uh, open access path. And we, are, uh, we know uh, open access journals, that the whole content of the journalist is open. You cannot publish in the journal unless you uh, decide that you will op uh, open your content. But in many of those journals, you have to pay APC, this uh, article processing charge. And, they exi uh, and already exist some journals. We are calling them diamond or platinum and open access, which they don't charge you any APCs, they are for free, and they, I don't know, have business models, I don't know, of, from third parties, some associations, or I don't know who finance the, their existence of journals. And uh, some in, in transition uh, period to whole open access situation are these hybrid journals. Hybrid journals are a mix of open access and subscription-based journals. So you can open some articles in the they are published in the traditional way, but they, their policies allow to open uh, some articles within uh, their volumes or issues if you pay APC. And we are calling them hybrid journals because this is a mix of traditional and uh, open access uh, publishing. Uh, but this is the situation we don't like because the publishers, commercial publishers, they are rich already, they are uh, getting more money. Because as a library, we have to pay the subscription for the journal to, that you can read the rest of the content that is closed. 
and you are paying the APC for your own article because you decide or the policy demands from you, from funders, institutions, or, or so on, that you have, if you have to open, you have to pay APC. Because this is very com common situation today. Uh, the European Commission is trying to avoid this situation, also prohibited in some some programs, research programs, and we do not do not like it, but it's often. <laughs> till, uh, and then we have this green open access, which is not uh, supported to the, of the policies anymore so so much. But if you are not, uh, uh, if any of policy funders, national institution policy demands from you open access, you can still decide to open your content. Uh, and the, the property of this kind of open access is that you publish your article in the traditional journal, in subscription-based journal, and then you check in the uh, uh, publisher's open access policy what he allows, uh, which version of the article the policy allows to deposit. Hello, morning. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Is some place free for you? Okay. Are you comfort enough? Okay. You have have place also here, but you choose by yourself. Uh, so, you in this green open access, you publish your article in the traditional way, in the subscription-based uh, journal. Uh, you uh, you're not paying anything for for the publishing, and then you have to. Uh, uh, see or look to the publi publisher's open access policy to see what is the version of your publication that they are allowed to deposit uh, to the, some institutional repository. Uh, the most wanted version is postprint because it is reviewed, a reviewed version. It is not formatted yet in the manner of the publication, but this is reviewed content. And then you can, after embargo, there's prescribed six, 12, or more months, you can down, uh, deposit at your institution repository the version of your article. And then is the content in this postprint version free for everybody. But funder policies uh, don't uh, prescribe anymore uh, this uh, open access. Uh, this is then your individual decision if you wish to open uh, your content of the article. You have heard a lot about these topics, uh, how to check the quality of the journal. Uh, you have to be uh, uh, for what is the a cost and what uh, Creative Commons license you will choose. You have to think about before you start. The nice graph I found in an article which is uh, cited here, and you have seen what is which kind of open access is peer-reviewed, where do you retain the copyright as authors? What is free for authors that doesn't cost any, anything for you? And what is free for readers? And in this, some fields of ways, paths of open access achievement, uh, you can think about what, what do you wish to gain? <laughs> to retain the copyright or you wish to not paying anything or, or go in the tradini uh, uh, in traditional way. Uh, another uh, picture I found is the uh, difference between traditional publishing and then also that kind of publishing we are talking this week, also with preprint servers. And if you see, as a scientist, you, you write a manuscript, you pick the journal, uh, then is then the ed editor and peer reviews, and uh, at the last, you publish this in the journal, and the, your article is exposed to the community. In uh, nowadays way, in the way of open access, is this uh, stage of uh, versions of articles also can be included in preprint servers, where can you uh, deposit. If publisher allows, you have to check when you pick the journal if they allow that you deposit anywhere your preprint or postprint version, that you will not have troubles at the end 
uh, although you are publishing in open access. Uh, and at this stage, uh, we didn't think about it till the phenomena of open access till now. Another pictures in the in the manner of uh, versions of our articles and this preprint uh, can be always shared in a green open access repository at any time if the journal allows you at the end or if you decided only to publish to deposit the article in, only in this way that you uh, exposed the, your content very fast to become some uh, feedback from your peers and uh, it preprint and post preprint cannot be uh, published in any situation if you don't wish uh, in the end in some journal. Then at this post print, uh, author accepts manuscript which is reviewed and you get uh, the author corrections can always be shared in green open access repository up after accept accepted uh, by the journal. Sometimes after embargo, you have to check the policy of the journal. Also, if you wish to self-archive uh, some version of your, your article. And the, in the end is this published version. Uh, and also here, you have to very carefully check the policies of the publishers in which way of if he, the publisher, uh, allows you to, to deposit anywhere this last uh, formatted version of the article. Uh, here's also some decision uh, diagram when you uh, thinking about which article I wish to choose. So if you know, so if you know some free open access journal and you want to submit to uh, I don't know, some repository or in the earlier versions of the article, you can think, you can ask, you have to ask yourselves, can I publish the postprint? If no, I don't know, go ahead, uh, choose another journal at the end. Uh, these are the questions you have to put there's, uh, yourselves when you are in the process of choosing the journal. And here is some platform, Sherpa Romeo, uh, where you can find, and we we'll see later, all the information what publishers uh, on the level of journals uh, allow you to do. That's why it's important. Uh, we are talking about, and many other speakers also tell, which is with us uh, all the week, uh, is, uh, have told you uh, that data are very important uh, research output the most important research output, I have to say. But what journal you wish to publish at the end of your research process is also important that you think uh, at the beginning of the process. Uh, that in the end, when you're faced with the policy of the publishers, funders, most important policy of open access was funders of your research require from you. It is perhaps too late if you think <laughs> this in the last stages of, of your research process. That's why is that this important not to think only uh, about the data, how you will really manage your data. Please think about also in which journal, for which purposes you wish then at the end publish your research. Okay, uh, I hope that uh, is large enough, this picture. This is one mind setting uh, with what options you have. Uh, if you decide to, uh, to publish in open access. If you don't wish to publish in open access, you have no, you, have, you, are, you are going to the traditional path of publishing, but you still have the opportunity, as I said before, to open your content on this green, green way. So at the end, you can, some version, if the journal policy allows you, uh, under uh, some embargo, a deposit at the, some repository, thematic or institutional. You have to be also careful in which deposit, uh, which in, uh, sorry, a repository the publisher allows you. Uh, in many cases, it, it is written only institutional repository, not thematic, it's uh, domain-specific repository. Uh, they can distinguish between those two terms, uh, domain-specific or institutional repository. 
If you decide to publish in open access, then is this platinum, diamond root, which is the problem uh, in, uh, perhaps in this moment, uh, that they are not so much recognized in the manner of uh, scientific evaluation. Uh, some are already in the general citation report, in Web of Science, or Scopus with SNP uh, impact factor and so on, and then you can uh, be your work evaluated on these uh, uh, factors, uh, the quality of your work, but already exists some, and the most common way is this gold open access, uh, which can be the journal that is open uh, all content, or so gold open access for for whole content of the journal, or this hybrid way, as I described before, that this mixed of closed and open open content on the article level, and that's why you can. And what is here important that you um, decide or check who will pay your costs. Is this institution, has this institution some funds for paying of open access? Do you have in the research uh, enough money to pay the APC? Or, or, and this is very important decisions that you will at the end be faced with them uh, also with, if you have enough money to publish open access because these APCs are much high, uh, high amounts of the money. You will see some example later. Okay, and now what is important? Okay, we have chosen open access, uh, gold open access journal, find. DOI is a repository of open access journals, very important to check there uh, uh, if there exists uh, a journal, uh, it, that suits you for your uh, research uh, outputs, to, to publish your research outputs. Very important is that you check the quality of the journal and the open access policy of the journal. Here in the Shepard Juliet, you have uh, collect, uh, is, this is the collection of open access policies uh, of funders. And Sherpa Romeo is also a collection of uh, uh, many informations about policies uh, depositing of journals. So the com uh, combine of those three uh, portals is very important to to <clears throat> to choose the right journal. And also important, as I said before, that you check costs if you will be able to pay the uh, the open access in this transition period. And at the end, if does. Uh, goes not through if you don't have enough money and you can uh, find anyone else that, that can cover your APC costs, you can find non-APC journal. This is this diamond platinum uh, uh, open access way. Okay, this is, okay, <laughs> directory of uh, open access journals. Uh, you can uh, search here per articles, per journals, also per topic, which field of science uh, you are looking for the journals. And if you search, he will find you a list of some journals from this chemistry. With do I seal this uh, this platform? You also have some uh, trust certificate of journals. Uh, this is some stamp that ensure you the quality of the journal, uh, and we can then filter the. And I will say, okay, I'm interesting that I wish not to pay. I don't have money enough. And I wish, okay, I will still limit to the, also only in English. And now I have to, uh, they, uh, the directly found me 10, 10 index journal with this criteria, that here's this quality stamp that is without APC and in English language. And then I can see further what uh, kind of policies this journal has. For example, this uh, Journal of Analytical Science and Technology. Uh, he will open me. Okay, what have I done yet? Okay, now, in, now I can uh, read the uh, information about this journal. Okay, I have, uh, have said before my, with my, uh, in my uh, search strategy that I don't wish that the journal some 
charge me some, some costs. Uh, the articles are uh, published under CC by license. It is uh, the, journal, the journal is uh, inside of the collection Springer Open. Springer is a very famous publisher, but they have also some journals uh, that they have opened all content. Uh, and you can you can uh, read here his copyright the, the, the copyright policy. And you can, in this shape of also check the depositing policy. Why is this important? Okay, I will. Okay, you uh, there. You have uh, you. The, they listed uh, this different uh, kind of versions of your article and what is allowed in the published version. What what you can do with uh, with this uh, version of article if you publish in this journal. That there's no embargo. You, you cannot wait for depositing. It is CC by uh, license. You, are, you retain the copyright. Uh, they, the publisher, deposit already uh, your article then into uh, these two databases. And um, this is for this uh, published version. If you go the step down with accepted version. This is a reviewed uh, version. Okay, or still no embargo. You can do this again. But where you can put this your this version? Autos homepage, institutional website, named repository, preprint repository. And for each publisher or on the level of journal, you have to check these policies of the publisher. That's why I am showing you, uh, this uh, now because you have to check it then you will, you will not do some mistakes. OK, what is still important? OK, and uh, the article has a permanent and identifier. This is the I. So this is also important. OK. This is the, the copy of one of the articles of this uh, journal. What I wish to uh, show you with this slide. Uh, persistent identifiers, identifiers is very important. Do I for the article and also ORCID, this is, oh, here I have mistake, this have to be D. This is author persistent identifier. I will correct this in the published version of my presentation. So, uh, this is auto profile. You can, uh, unique ident identification of your as uh, your uh, publications and also of your that uh, and in this profile, you can collect all, all your uh, publications you published till now and also add uh, the, the other in the future. Uh, and uh, also the, the CC by license is in the article also listed in this manner. OK, the hybrid journal, uh, what is here important, I, I wish to show you. OK. Uh, it's pretty much the similar, but what is the difference? The difference also, do we have to see article sharing? This is example of Elsevier. If they have their very defined policy, what uh, they allow you with article sharing, which versions, how, how many copies, uh, what you uh, can do with the link to the article, so on, please read it. And also this is uh, the the some piece of the his their web page. Let's see this uh, at home. What is their policy? Uh, what is their agreements? How they are looking, and so on. So very important. There, there, are in many cases, very expensive journals with very high APCs. Check the costs when you decide to to go to the hybrid journal uh, and to open. Uh, open access. That's why here I don't know it's a little bit small. Also, Elsevier uh, have at the, at its web page the pricing list of the APCs, and here is the list of the journals with in euros. I know 2019, 3,300, 4,500. Uh, very high prices for APCs. 
That's why it's fine that you have, I don't know, within the project, uh, the, the cost uh, for a bank of APC and uh, or the, your institution have some funds to pay open access. Okay, but if you are not obliged to publish in open access, you have also uh, every uh, the, the choice to choose green open access if the publisher allows. And in this case, it is very important that you check their self-archiving policy. If they allow to do that you some version of article deposit after embargo uh, in some institutional or domain-specific repository. The embargoes are six, 12, and more months. So after you publish the article, after six months, in humanities or social science, sciences, uh, in, in the past, the, the European Commission, in their research programs, they uh, prescribed the, the embargoes. For social science and humanities, six months, uh, no, 12 months, and for natural science and engineering, uh, six months. This is very short period, and most of the publishers, they wish to have longer embargoes, and they also prescribe longer embargoes. That's why in this research project, the European Commission uh, doesn't support any more uh, green open access, only gold, because the, the most important is that the content is also not, not as wide as possible shared, but as fast as possible shared. But in this way, the publisher retain the, the copyright because this is very important lines. You have to negotiate with them before you, you sign the, the transfer cop copyright agreement. It's very important that you have some, you uh, retain some rights, that you have some uh, power on your content, if I may so say. Okay, this is uh, only one example. Also in the Elsevier web page, you find some search engine journal embargo, uh, embargo finder. Okay, I have, for this example, I have looked for psychology and only three journals with allowed 12 months of embargo the, by Elsevier, uh, the founder uh, find me, uh, has found me. So find and check, uh, use and check, I will say. Okay, we are at the end of my uh, presentation. Uh, what is important, I wish to say you increase your research visibility. It is not uh, important uh, you can do this, some of this, also uh, if you publish in the tra traditional way, closed way. You can have some profiles. Google Scholar, LinkedIn, uh, ResearchGate profile, Academia Edu profile. Then you expose yourself, also list your publications, your research achievements, and uh, in this way you, ha you can uh, inform the environment, your research, research peers' environment about your important work. If is your article published in open access, you can put the article on the allowed version, I will say, in repository, institutional or domain-specific, also on your personal websites. Tweet, uh, publish the presentation on SlideShare, create your, as I said, personal uh, profiles. So this is my uh, short presentation because you heard a lot about this topic uh, in uh, this week. If some questions.